Oh, oh Martin, this is uh, Leonard. Just to let you know, I'm a uh, tech support here. If you need anything, just let me know. All right, Leonard, thank you so much. We're ready to roll. All right. I'll just to hang back here and uh, um, when I'm mute. Oh, Leonard, really yeah. quick. Uh, yes. Can you see this up here? Uh, is there a way that I can share this so you can share with the audience? Or is there a chat that I can? I can use the chat bar, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Should be able to use oh, the chat. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let me see. Yeah, I've opened up the chat here. Yeah. I'm not participant page if you can just keep on adding that so when people are like oh where do we go if you could just copy and paste that that would be great got it thank you copy this okay And then Leonard, just let me know if you want me to just start at 1115 or should I wait until people come on board? Uh, we can start whenever you're ready. Um, these are recorded, so if anyone misses anything, they can just jump on the recording. Ah, perfect. All right, I'm going to go ahead and begin. Thank you. All righty, folks, I am going to begin our session for today. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Martin Cisneros. I'm going to be your facilitator for today. Uh, I am an education evangelist with the K-12 EDU team. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about um, getting started with Adobe Express, right? So uh, for those of you, uh, please make sure that you are, um, you know, signing in. Um, I'm going to leave this up for a bit, making sure you have that information readily available for you. And as you guys are taking that piece of information, I also want to let you know that you are um, inside the chat. You are getting this page. This is a participant page where a lot of the fun is going to be happening. So I want to make sure you have that. So once again, it's the QR code or bit.ly forward slash dot welcome. All righty. So what are we learning today, ladies and gentlemen? What we're learning is how to support students to create meaningful graphics that connect to your curriculum, create uh, quick videos that take them deeper into the learning process, and create digital portfolios that help them reflect on the process and product of learning. So we have graphics, we have video, and we have, of course, journals. So what does that look like, right? If you're brand new to Adobe Express, you probably have heard of us before, right, uh, Adobe? So what Adobe Express is, is a fun way and engaging way for students to design stunning presentations, images, and animations now, uh, create some just amazing uh, web pages for either journals or just, you know, for products. And then, of course, making captivating videos in a way that uh, many of you have not experienced before, right? So what does our schedule look like today? Somewhat, it looks like this. We're going to talk a little bit about visible thinking. Uh, how do we do a post of videos for student voice and choice? Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about portfolios and then some next steps that we want you to have, right? So... That was from a different one. Okay, so uh, let's make thinking visible infographics here. Um, so why would we want to make uh, um, infographics, right? So one of the things that um, we are thinking about is, you know, our uh, what we know specifically about research is that our brains are wired to rapidly make sense um, of of and remember visual imprint. So the best way I tell people is like, if you travel to um, you know any location, right? Uh, we know that if you don't know the language, if you see an activity on a sign with a big red circle and the line across from it, more than likely you don't want to do that, right? Uh, so a well-designed visual image can yield much more powerful and memorable learning experiences than others. So in education, especially if you are working with multilingual learners, 
this is a great way of using this. So um, on the chat, once again, just a reminder that you have a participant page that we will be um, using in a few moments. Thank you. So these are some of the outcomes, right? When we start using graphics in our classrooms, uh, these could be made for, you know, creating different iterations, infographics, posters, magazines, covers, and more. Uh, you know, so all the way from the left in elementary school, when we're looking at maybe the story of the three little pigs and, and looking at the story from the point of view of the wolf, right? point of view of the house. It could be a variety of different things all the way to the right side. And what we have here is an example of a high school student um, in which they uh, are, of course, are talking about, you know, misinformation, right? How do we deal with this? with misinformation and what can we do about it? So um, it's once again, it's allowing students to engage and explore in the content. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to participate in creating a graphic about us. And this could be a great introductory um, for yourself to your students or also a great way for your students to introduce themselves to each other. Okay, so what you wanna do is um, once again on the chat, you have the particip the participant page, which is this guy right here, right? And what I want you to do is I want you to scroll down. And when you scroll down, you are going to see this step one. So you're going to see the graphic on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, you're going to see creativity, identity, graphic template. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Right in the big red button is where you want to click so you can go ahead and have a, a copy of the template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the big red button. And then you are going to see a remix of this, right? So uh, this is the template that we want to use. And down at the bottom, you're going to see a big purple or blue button. And we are going to click here where it says remix this design. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And once we finish clicking on that, we are now going to get into Adobe Express. Now, for some of you, uh, it's going to say to log in. So please make sure you log in with your Google San Francisco account, SFUSD. So make sure you do that. Okay. I'm going to wait a few seconds because I know that listening to me and trying to do stuff at the same time can be a little, uh, uh, um, a little difficult. All right. Okay. Now that we are into Adobe Express, what we're going to end up doing. So I'm seeing a few people raising their hands. So I'm going to go through this process once again. Uh, so what are we doing is in the chat, you have the link to this page, right? This is the participants page. What we want you to do here is we want you to go ahead and scroll down. When you scroll down, you are going to, you're going to go down here to where it says step one. On step one, you're going to click on the, creative identity graphic template. Um, so go ahead and do that. Uh, and when you click on that, it's going to bring you here, right? So I'm sorry, we go from here, you need to click on the big red button, it's gonna bring you here. And then from here, you wanna click on remix this design. And that will automatically launch you into Adobe Express. If you're already logged in, you should see uh, the following graphic. If not, it's going to ask you to log in. So please make sure you are logging in with your San Francisco credentials. Yes. So thank you for that, Leonard. Leonard on the chat says, be sure to log in with Google and use your district email address at sfusd.edu. Thank you for that. All right. Now that we're here, we're going to change a few things around because what we're going to do is we're going to click down here where it says, who is Mina Thomas? And um, once you click on the, on the um, text where it says Mina Thomas, at the top right, you're gonna see this text editor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to erase the name Mina Thomas. And what I'm gonna add is I'm gonna add Martin Cisneros, okay? Once I add Martin Cisneros, I see the change down here. So from there, I'm now going to move my cursor over to this ice cream where it says favorite foods. And once I click on there, you're going to see the editor um, turn to edit shape. Now on here, I can click on the editor and I can change the color if I want. 
but it's not really the color that I want to change. What I want to change is the actual um, icon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on replace at the top. And at the top left, I'm going to see a, a plethora of different shapes, right? And right here, you see a variety of different ice creams. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, change that because if we're talking about me, I love me some tacos. And I had some really good tacos last night. So that's what's in my head. And I'm going to say, oh, this is a pretty nifty taco right here. So I'm going to click on it. And when I click on it, you're going to see a change down here. And now by dragging on the corners, I can um, either rotate it or make it larger or smaller, however I want. Right. So these are some of the basics, but I'm going to go up here. And what I'm going to show you is I'm going to click on Mina, right? That was the person's name here. So I'm going to click on Mina. And once again, when I click on, you know, on her image, um, this editor pops up at the top right that says edit image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit replace, now, because uh, we're using Adobe Express, we literally have thousands and thousands of 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 um, of ultimate great stock fo uh, photos in here, um, you know, and uh, you can change that picture. But since we're talking about Martin Cisnero, since we're talking about me, this is what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going um, I clicked on first. The first thing I did was I clicked on the image and then I went up. To the to the edit image editor, I clicked on replace, and this uh, popped up for me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on upload photo because I already know I have a photo of myself in my computer. So now I'm going to scroll down to see if I can find that photo now, and it should be coming up pretty soon. <laughs> All right. And here's one. So if you're looking, oh, you know what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop here because I know you can't see my screen. So I'm going to share one more time, but I think I'm going to share my full screen this time around. Desktop one. Oh, you know, what? I should just share my desktop. That's what I'll do. All right. So now you should be seeing everything. So now that I'm here, what I'm going to do is I am going to click on upload photo. And it's now going to look on my downloads fo photo. So now I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. And as I scroll down, I should find that picture of myself. But this is a really cool product of it. So Here's the picture of myself, right? And as you can see, that it is a picture of me and there is a background. Um, so I want you to see the magic of Adobe at this moment. Uh, I click on that picture. I'm going to click on open. And I'm going to say, look, Ma, no hands, because since Adobe knows that that image had its background removed, it's trying to do the same thing with my photo. Um and as you can see, depending on how large the photo is, it might take a little bit more time. So now I have my personal photo inside of there with the background removed. So now I can continue to, to finish editing this component, right? So I'm going to go in here to where it says over 5,000 students taught. And I'm going to change that to over 25 years in education. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I started teaching in the late 1900s. So, <laughs> so I have been in education over 20 years. Um, and if I'm talking about my re, you know, my my early years, right? My favorite subject wasn't art. I kid around and tell people my favorite subject was recess, <laughs> right? I love reading books, but I love more. Uh, I love loves listening to audiobooks because I find myself I have a lot of time on my um, on my commutes. So I add that and then up here I'm going to change this when he isn't teaching he is and then I'm going to take this bike right so this bike is just one of our assets that we have here. Right. And what I'm going to do is if I want to change it, I'm going to go up here to where it says replace. After I click on it, I click on it first. 
go up to where it says replace. And now, instead of a bike, I'm going to type in the word music because I'm either listening to music or I'm making music. All right, so I'm going to add this guy here. So you are now getting the gist that you can come in here, you can come and change colors, you can come and change, you know, the stuff is there, but I'm going to show you a few more tricks. I'm just going to take a look at the chat really quick. Um, okay, so let me go ahead. As you guys are now working on your graphic, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to check on a few things. Okay. There we go. All righty. So at this moment, what you're doing is you're working on your graphic. And I'm gonna show you a few more tricks for those of you who, and you can continue working on it. You don't have to listen to what I'm saying next. But, you know, if you are going to be doing, this is a great way of getting of, of your students to get to know you, right? Because you can create one of these identity graphics that you can share with your students. Um, the other thing is allowing your students to create one of these for them, right? So when it comes to students, you already gonna, you already know they're like, oh, can we change this? Can we edit this? So this is not a, a tool session by itself. So for me, when it comes to introducing new technology to students, I love the productivity struggle that we have with learning new concepts and learning new tools. But what I am going to show you is uh, the background because the background is important. If I click on the background here, right, it allows me to either uh, change the color of the background but my favorite thing to do is not to change the solid background color, is to add an image to the background. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and click on, you know, once again, I click on the background. You have your edit background editor pop up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here where it says choose image. Now I can go in here and I can add any of these images that, that, um, that I have, right? Something that all makes sense. So personally, I like going up here and I'm going to type in the word spectrum. Because now I get all these wonderful colors, right? Of the spectrum <laughs> of, of, of different colors. And I love these, especially like these uh, uh, multicolor solid outbursts, right? Um, I have these all these different iterations. Oh, look at that. Right, these are all fun. And I'm gonna go down here. I always love this one here. All right. So that is looking really, really good right there. So I'm liking this one. Oh, and there's that one as well. So here's what 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 sometimes happens, right? If you are looking at stuff and you click anywhere else. You're like, oh, where did it go? Where did my background go? You, you need to click on um, the background again, click on replace, and then go down here and choose a different background, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave it here with this one because what sometimes happens is people click somewhere else, they'll try to come back to photos and add uh, another photo in here, but it does it like this. It adds it, it adds it as an extra picture. So just hit the delete button. And once again, what you wanna do is delete the latest one, click on the background, go to the edit background component, click on replace, and then go ahead and search for whichever photo you want. And like I said, Adobe has thousands and thousands of free stock photos that you can use uh, without any copyright infringement. Now, now that we're ready to download, right, what we want to do is um, 
up at the very top, you have the download component. So I'm going to click on there and it gives you the ability to download as a PNG, a JPEG or a PDF. So the best way I tell folks is if you are creating a logo or something that you want transparent, then you want to choose the PNG so you can get that transparency. If you want a picture that's universal, I would go with JPEG. And last but not least, we have PDF. Um, if you want to print your graphics, I highly suggest you select PDF because it Adobe automatically will download the PDF at a higher quality for you to print. So with that being said, I always leave mine on PNG because PNGs also are higher quality, even if it's not a transparent. Um, if I'm going to use it as a picture and PDF, if um, we're going to go ahead and um, print it out. So once again, I'm downloading, I'm hitting PNG and I'm downloading my image because we're going to use this image in this other project that we're going to do next. So at this time, I'm just going to check the chat really quick. We're good. All righty. Awesome. So what we're going to do next is that we are now going to um, move on over to talk about what we can find on Adobe Express, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a video out of this information, right? So why do we want to use video? Um, why do we want to use video storytelling? It's for a variety of different reasons, right? Number one, because it's multimodal. Number two, because we are always talking about transliteracy. Number three, because we're always doing project-based learning. And then we got to think about engagement and we think about uh, copyright as well, right? So storytelling is very, very important in everything that we're doing with now. So on here, right, I'm going to give you some examples of what some students have done, just so you can get an idea of what we can do with our storytelling um, component in Adobe Express video. I am from by Ophelia. I am from Willie Nelson, the such cheap toy. And from the framed photos of my mom and dad and the heart-shaped painted plate. I am from loving and kindness and time to hit the high. I am from the small cherry tree in my veggie garden whose leaves are beautiful. I am from gardening and sketching and the song Dark Horse. I am from Tia, Drea, and Grandma Sissy. And my brother's chocolate chip cookies and my dad's bacon. I am from all, those, all these moments when I visited my family for Christmas. And every moment I've said is, is what makes me a part of who I am. All right. So what we just saw there is just an example of what we can do with the video examples, right? So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to create your video so you can tell your story. Let's make your own video here where you share what you're excited to have students create this year. So I'm going to go back uh, to our graphic here. But before we leave this, there's a few things I do want to share with you. Um, up at the top left, you're going to you're going to see the words my project and Adobe saves um, files. Just I want you to think like Google saves documents. Right. So if you're working with Google Docs, you understand that if you don't um, title that particular document, it automatically gives it the title untitled document. Right. And after a while, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of untitled documents and you don't want to have that. And at the same time, you don't want to have that with Adobe. Adobe, though, calls it my project. So what I'm going to call this is my 2022 or my 22 through 23 identity. Right. And as some of you might have figured out by now that every time you create with Adobe Express, it automatically <laughs> saves it to the cloud. So where does it go? Where does it say? So that's what I'm going to show you next. 
uh, with my cursor, I'm gonna go back to that little um, icon, the black icon on the top left. I'm gonna click on where it says Adobe Express and now it brings us home. On the left-hand side, you see the big plus, you see the home button and you also see a projects button. If you click on the projects button, this is where you can see all the magic that you've been creating uh, from the beginning of time, right? So you have all this wonderfulness in there. Now, the other thing that I'm going to show you is how um, I'm going to go back home. So I'm going to click on the little black Adobe Express logo. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you how to create a video. Now, this is really, really slick, right? Because what we ended up doing was we already downloaded our um, our project here. So now what we're going to do is we are going to create a video. And the way we do that is we're going to go ahead and click on the plus sign at the top left. And we're going to go ahead and scroll down to where it says video. Now, the first thing it's going to ask us is, Martin, every great story starts somewhere, right? So I'm going to call this what I'm... I'm going to call it excitement in Mr. Cisneros 22 through 23 class. I'm going to click on next. Here's the magic. I'm going to stop here because before I continue, here's, here's the magic, right? So I tell folks that um, what I love about Adobe is it's always trying to figure out, well, how can we best help our um, teachers and students? So for example, uh, one thing I know that is that a lot of our students need help in learning how to tell different types of stories. This is where Adobe Video really kicks in, right? So on here, all I ended up doing was if I go back to the original, if I go back home, right? The way I got to create a video was I clicked on the big plus sign at the top left and scroll down and click on create video. From there, it's going to ask me for a title and you saw me write my title. And now the next step is the following because it says, Martin, pick a story template or start from scratch. So when it says story template, what is it talking about? It's talking about the following. Number one, promoting an idea. And I know this, right? Yeah, sometimes we think, well, shouldn't that be obvious? No, there are some elements in each and every one of these templates. How do you how do we promote an idea? Change, uh, create change or move your audience to action. How do we tell what happened, right? Anything from a family vacation to a celebration or something that happened to you. We then have a hero's journey. We have show and tell, personal growth, teach a lesson and invitation. I know what you're thinking. I'm going to go back to that as well. <laughs> what Martin isn't show and tell just, you just go out and say, look, ladies and gentlemen, this is my water bottle. This is the company that whatever your show and tell is. What I'm saying is that there are some procedures and this will be very, very helpful for your students to know all seven different types of stories to tell. But we're not here for that today. What we're here is we are going to start from scratch. So I'm going to hit on this big blue button at the bottom. I'm going to click on start from scratch. And you're now going to see um, the layout, the layout of how to create a video in Adobe Express, which is a little different than how you normally create video anywhere else. Because what you're seeing here in front of you, you're hearing, you're seeing here is just a slide. So if you ever created a Google slide, a PowerPoint, a keynote, you're, you're, you're in the mix already. So what I'm going to do now is um, it says I can either add video. So if I had video coming in from my, you know, um, from my cell to my computer, I can add that. I can add text. I can add a photo. And we have icons as well. But because this is a one for me of what I'm excited about, I'm going to click on photo. And I can either choose from the thousands that we have here from Adobe Stock, or I can go up to the top where it says upload photo. And I can scroll down to find a photo that I can use that I should already have. And here we go. So I'm going to use that guy right there. Let's use that one. Click on open. And there we are, right? So now this is a picture of me. Um, and as you're seeing this thing spin around the little plus sign, that means it's continuing to upload. It's a very high quality picture. Um, and hopefully it'll upload with the internet speeds that I have today. So let's see what happens here. 
And I'm going to, well, I'm going to wait for it as, as we have that because I have no other option here. All right, going once, going twice. Uh, I got to learn to to choose um, smaller um, images here. But at least you understand. Some of you might experience this if you don't have very great quality of internet speeds. It might take a little bit of time. So here we are. As that is loading, uh, what I'm going to show you is that down here at the bottom, you have, of course, your first slide um, and all the slides you're going to be adding in. So I'm going to be clicking on this plus sign at the bottom. So it automatically gives me a, 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 another slide so I can add. This time around, um, on the right-hand side, I can see that I can choose a, a layout. So what I'm going to choose as a layout is I'm going to click here where it says split screen. And then we're just going to redo this process over and over again. So while that is waiting, I'm going to go back to this guy. And I think this guy is already done. So now I'm going to click on the plus sign and I'm going to add text. And the text I'm going to write is my name, Martin Cisneros. And now I have my image. I have my text. And part of the movie is the sound. So what I'm going to do is down at the bottom, you're going to see that big purple button that has the microphone. So I'm going to click on that microphone and hold down that button. If this is the first time you're using Adobe Express, when you click on that microphone button, it's going to ask Google Chrome, hey, can we use the microphone? And of course, you click on allow. For now... I've already went through the process. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on this button at the bottom and hold it down. Hello, everyone. My name is Martin Cisneros, and today I'm going to talk to you what I am excited about my class for this year. And then I let it go, and that has already been recorded. Now, I can listen to my recording by clicking on the play button, but for me, that sounded pretty well. And on the right-hand side of that slide deck, I also see how much time went into that particular um, sound, right? So now I'm gonna go to the next one, which is the one that I created with the split screen. So now the first one I'm gonna talk about is I am going to talk about uh, creating graphics. And over here, I'm going to go ahead and click on the icon this time around. And I'm going to type in a graphics. So I like this image right here, this icon. So I'm going to click on select that. And now I have a, um, a, an icon of graphics. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the little... Uh, record button again, which is the microphone at the bottom. Once again, what am I doing? I'm clicking and I'm holding it in. So one of the things I'm really excited about is to teach my students how to create um, a variety of types of graphics from infographics to uh, uh, poster graphics, right? Uh, using Adobe Express. So now I'm fine with it. If I wanna to listen to it, I can hit this play button, but what am I doing? Um, we said the, the whole component was we wanted three things that we're excited about to teach our students. So mm -hmm. creating graphic was one. I'm going to click on this plus sign again. And now I get a third uh, slide. Once again, I'm going to go over here to split screen as my layout. And this time around, I am going to add the text of creating video. And once again, I can either use an icon or I can use a photo. So this time I'm going to use a photo and I'm going to type in the word video. Uh, hello, Mom. Martin, sorry to interrupt. I'm um, just yes. wondering if you could check the status of your uh, chat. It, might, it looks like it's been disa it's currently disabled. Oh, how did that happen? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little bug. So let's go back. Share computer sound, that looks good. Okay, I don't see anything with the chat. Let's try, okay. Yeah. 
I'm going to stop the share really quick. And I see everything turned on on my end. Uh, try turning chat on and off. Okay, I have the chat back on, but are you saying whether or not the participants can chat? Um, uh, that was the issue some people were having that they said they weren't able to uh, chat. Uh, is anyone able to um, put in something in the chat box? And then just for my information on the webinar, is that usually turned on? Oh, okay, so yes. Okay, now I see, I see them now. <laughs> All right, we're back. Okay, great, woohoo. All right, so thank you everyone for, for holding on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and head back to sharing and continuing here. Um, all right. It was, oh, I apologize if, if for those of you who were not able to see the, the chat during that time. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, can you send the link to open Adobe Express? So once again, um, we can add the link to the page that we sent everyone, which is this one. I'll go ahead and add it there. Thank you, Leonard. Leonard went ahead and put that information there. So I'm going to continue here. Um, so once again, what we were doing is all we're doing is by creating a video is once we got into uh, Adobe Express, we click on the big blue button with the plus sign and then we select video and now we're creating a video. From here, all we're doing is we're adding slides and each slide carries its own theme, its own um, component in there. So we went from um, adding a slide for creating graphics one for creating video and i think at this point i was looking for photos uh that had a video there was one so i'm gonna add that one and once again i'm gonna play a little piece about it so here we go so the second thing i am excited to be teaching um our students is how do we create different types of videos for different audiences um and it's not only using our chromebooks but using everything that we have uh the fun thing is that there is no no um no bad way of creating video so definitely looking forward to that one more slide because i'm talking about three things so once again how do you create a slide for your video you go down to the bottom at the left you click on that um, big plus sign with the white rectangle box on there I'm gonna click on that and then i get another slide which i'm going to use split screen again and this time i'm going to add the text and on the text is create web portfolios so over here, I'm going to choose uh, icon, and I'm going to type in the website. And here's a website. All right. So now we're pretty much ready to see, like, um, oh, I still need to record. So I'm going to record this one. I'm going to hit that, once again, that purple big uh, button on the bottom of my screen and hold it down until I finish recording. So third, what I'm excited about is to teach my students how to create their own web portfolios using Adobe Express, which we can then in, um, integrate all their graphics and videos that they'll be creating throughout the year. So let's roll. All right, 
So now I recorded, uh, you know, for each one of my slides at the bottom, I created some some um, some text. Uh, I did some some graphics, I did some icons and some pictures, and I threw my voice on there. So now I'm going to make sure uh, I will answer some of these questions. I'm just seeing these questions now. I'm going to answer these uh, when I go back. I just want to make sure that we finish this process so we can make sure that everyone understands the following. All right. So now. Once again, I create a video. They're all down here, all right? So now I'm gonna hit the play button so you can see what we just finished creating and hold it down. Hello everyone, my name is Martin Cisneros and today I'm gonna talk to you what I am excited about my class for this year. So one of the things I'm really excited about is to teach my students how to create um, a variety of types of graphics from infographics to uh, uh, poster graphics, right? Uh, using Adobe Express. So the second thing I am excited to be teaching um, our students is how do we create different types of videos for different audiences. Um, and it's not only using our Chromebooks, but using everything that we have. Uh, the fun thing is that there is no, no, um, no bad way of creating video. So definitely looking forward to that. So third, what I'm excited about is to teach my students how to create their own web portfolios using Adobe Express which we can then in, um, integrate all their graphics and videos that they'll be creating throughout the year. So let's roll. All right. So what you just finished watching is a video that we created, but hopefully you notice a few things. So let's take a look at the chat to see if you guys picked up on that. Um, all right. For the images, students do not have pictures of themselves on their computers. There are a way for them to take a photo of themselves in the computer in Adobe Express. So that's a great question at the moment. Right, I'm gonna go back here. So at the moment, um, I don't think you can do it from within, right? So a possibility is to do the following. A possibility is that you can, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new graphic here. I'm gonna create a new graphic and hit next. So a way uh, that they can bring in their photos, there's multiple ways of bringing in their photos, but one of the ways is clicking on photos and then they can upload a photo, but you're stating that they might not have one. So they can click here where it says alternate resources or alternate sources, and they can bring in from their Google Drive or their Google Photos, right? And that's what you want to do. So that's one way of, of bringing in photos. The other part is... Uh, Sorry to interrupt, uh, Martin. May, can you please uh, have your screen share on, please? Oh, that did, did not share. Okay. Let's try that again. And hit and share. All right. So once again, what am I doing? Um, I'm showcasing how we can bring in different types of um, photos um, if you don't happen to have a photo on your computer. So one of the ways is uh, where it's, we click on photos over here on the left-hand side. And up here at the top, you have upload photos and you have these three little dots where it says alternate sources. So I'm gonna click on where it says alternate sources. And then you can see that you can bring in from other resources, specifically your Google Drive. So your students can, if, if they have Google Drive, they can upload their photo there. And from there, they can bring it in into their Chromebooks if that's what they're using in order to get into um, uh, uh, Adobe Express. Uh, what else? Um, do you do you have to link your presentation and your video? Great question again. So let me share that. And uh, so with the video, I'm going to go back to my projects over here. So once you're done with the video, the way you share, you have multiple ways of sharing your video. You can either download it, right? and upload it to wherever you want, or you can click here where it says share, and then you can um, you can invite other students or other folks to, to create this job, uh, this video with you. But what I highly recommend is up here at the top where it says publish. I'm gonna click up here where it says publish, and on here, you're going to see this. This is the title. You can choose a category. I'm gonna pick education. You can add a subtitle if you like, and then you can toggle this on and off whether you want the author to show and then you click on create link from here what you're seeing is at the top 
it's preparing that video so we can share it out with the link. Uh, a cool process of this is like for those of you who have ever created a web page, you understand the following that when you create a link, it's whatever is is completed at this moment. But let's say later on, uh, you get an idea or you get some feedback that you want to add some elements to your video, you can go back and add some elements, but it will not show where you published already because you have to come back here. Um, you'll see in a moment and you, you're going to have to uh, republish um, your video. Now, the fun thing, it's, it works similar to what Google Docs does, right? If you ever happen to have a Google Doc, you send the doc to, to, your, um, to your audience and then you remember, oh, I needed to add some elements. Well, you can add the elements, but the, your audience would see it live. The difference here is um, if you make any edits, your audience won't see it live until you go back into share and you're going to see a little button that says, oh, we've seen that you've been working or you made some edits on this video. Would you like to republish your video? Then you click yes. The great thing is you don't have to resend another link because if the other person or persons already have that link, you will they will see the, the fully updated video on that. So I'm going to take a look at other questions and then I will come back to this. All right. Okay, so uh, people are asking a little bit about how do we change the color back to the graphic. I'll go back there in a minute. All right. So a lot of these, okay, here we go. So as you're seeing here, uh, your... Um, your almost ready link. So now it's telling us that if we close this, it will not interrupt what we're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on copy here, right? Because this is gonna be useful for our next iteration, which is what we're gonna do uh, to uh, create a portfolio or a web page, right? So I'm gonna let this roll a little bit. So now that we're able to create a video, um, we are now going to, of course, uh, dive into portfolios, but there's a few things I do want to show you about the video before we move forward. Uh, this was part of the questions, right? So in our video, I'm going to lower this down. Uh, we now have the link that we shared, right? It's here. If we click on publish, we have it there ready to roll. Click on create link. And once again, it's preparing. Oh, and here we go. We have it ready. So I'm going to click on copy. But before we even move um, to any other components, I do want to show you the following. So with video, you found out that it automatically played sound, right? You, you saw me. I didn't add any sound. So what ends up happening is that um, a, Adobe automatically adds that sound to it. Now, if you want to delete the music, add your own music, uh, change the, the type of music, you can do that on the fly. So up here at the top right, you have the four different um, tabs, which are layout, theme, resize, and music. So I'm gonna click on music. And in here, this was the music that was playing. I can change it. I can make it a little bit more playful. Or something more relaxed. Or not. <laughs> I'm, once again, I apologize for my internet being very slow. Okay, let me give it one more try. All right. As this is trying to work out, I'm just going to explain a little bit more things. So on here, like I said before, you can uh, raise the volume or lower the volume. But what? There it is. All right. <laughs> So uh, you can totally change the mood of your of your film. The other thing is at the top part of the music, you can make the volume go either higher or lower. 
But the nice thing is that when you're talking, it automatically does this thing called ducking, right? So as you're talking, if you have music in the background, uh, the music will duck as you are speaking. And when you stop speaking, it'll bring the music back up. So that's the nice part. The other great part about video is that we can change the video from a widescreen to a square. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, Martin, why would we want to use a, a square, right? Um, so I'm going to go back here. My internet's acting up today, but one of the reasons why we would want to use a square is if you think about how students are telling their stories, especially on social media sites like TikTok or, or um, Instagram or in a variety of other places, square is the new new, right? So once again, we're giving our students a variety of different ways that they can um, tell their stories. The last thing I'm going to do before I check some more questions on the chat is I'm going to come up here to where it says theme. And on the theme, this is where you can come in and change the look and feel of your video, right? So we have different themes. And I know some of you on the chat ask, can we change the font? Can we change certain colors? To an extent, this is where the layout, the resize, the theme, and the music come in. Um, and the best way is because if, you know, um, I always tell this story that uh, when I started teaching in the late 1900s in the district that I used to teach at, uh, there were... Um, there were these things called computer labs for the for the young folks out there, and we were only able to use the computer lab twice a month, 55 minutes time um, at a time. And I remember going there and thinking, oh, good Lord, I can't wait to see, you know, what my students produce because they've been working on their on their stories. And of course, what ended up happening is we go to the computer lab and 50 minutes out of the 55 minutes we were there. All they were doing was just trying to figure out what font they were going to use, and they never produced a thing. So with Adobe here, what ends up happening is that oh. they modify um, they modify this component uh, where you can choose colors, you can choose stuff, but it still looks great. Choose the fonts, you know, uh, but the fonts that go within the brand, right? Now, for those of you who, um, once you have your, your fully... Uh, um, you're fully Adobe Express from SFUSD, you're gonna be able to use your, um, add your brand. So that's the full bells and whistles. So all of you are getting the full bells and whistles, right? And the cool part about adding your brand, that means that you can upload your San Francisco Unified School District logo. You can add the logo from the class. That could be a challenge that you might do. And what it'll do, it'll suck up the colors and give you a gradient. So every time you're working on a project, you can click on add your brand and it'll brand the colors and the color palette all for you, right? That's the other wonderful thing. So <clears throat> I'm going to take a look at the chat really quick. Wow, we have <laughs> we have quite a bit of messages. Let's see. Um, okay, so they, they want to know the same thing for the video. I mean, um, how do we do that for the graphics? And then, okay, so there, there is, um, all right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this from, uh, from Mammy. Uh, she says that SFUSD Clever Portal has the Creative Cloud Express, formerly Adobe Spark, which is absolutely correct, that connects to Adobe Express. So yes, you all should have the opportunity to go in through your portal to get the full bells and whistles. So thank you for that. Um, so uh, this question from Jennifer, can you share the editing access with your students? The answer is yes. So you can definitely add um, students once they're up and running in here. So um, the answer is yes to that. So once again, this comes from Michael. Uh, will students need individual logins to access the site? No, once again, they do it all through Clever. So the how to change the background music on your video, once again, um, you click on the music up at the very top and you can add my music, which means you can upload your music to it. So that's one way of doing it. So thank you for that. Or you can turn the music off if you don't want music on your uh, video. Okay. Okay. Cool, cool. So we have a very few minutes left. So the, the last thing I'm going to be able to show you is um, how do we put all of this together? So now move this down. Well, 
move this down here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Adobe Express. And this time around, I'm going to hit the plus sign and I'm going to scroll down to where it says web page, right? Or portfolio. It, it's pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to hit portfolio. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the title to my portfolio, which should be my name. And I'm calling this 2022 through 23 portfolio. Now I have that there. So the way you the way this runs is if you scroll down, you're going to see a plus sign. And then the plus sign is going to allow you to add different elements, right? So in here, I'm going to go ahead and add a photo. And now I can add a photo once again from uh, my computer. If not, I can go in here. I'm going to type in the word idea. And I can come in here and say, oh, this one looks pretty cool. Oh, there we go. So I came down here, I added this, but the reality, um, you can come down here to where the, to, um, where the, the little cog is, if you click on it, um, you can add um, alternate text in here as well, right? Or you can say this image is just decorative, which, you know, uh, it all depends. But now, now you can add a variety of different other things. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add my photo and the photo that I'm gonna use is from my very first project, right? From the very first thing I created today. So I have that in there now. So now I can scroll down and the other thing I can do is I can add a video, right? So the video is asking, is there a YouTube or is there another link? So I'm gonna go back here to uh, my video. And once again, I'm gonna click on share. I'm gonna hit publish. And then it says, oh, Martin, you know, we noticed you made some changes. Do you wanna update the link? Totally up to you. But I'm gonna copy my shareable link I'm gonna go back over here where um, where my portfolio is being built. And what I'm going to um, add here, I'm going to go ahead and add uh, the link to my video and then click on save. So once I hit save, I now have my video. Now, in order to see what the, how this magic looks like, I'm gonna go to the top and I'm gonna hit present. So that way I get to see what my portfolio slash web page looks like. So as it's loading, you see that there. And I want you to take a look at the stock photos that we use, right? Because they're very, very high quality. And the display looks pretty good. The video is already embedded. If I hit play. And hold it down. Hello, everyone. My name is Martin Cisneros, and today I'm going to talk to you what I... All right. So you see that the video works, right? So now that we have this, we're ready to roll. We're like, okay, this is pretty slick. So now um, I would go back up to here to share, and I can publish and share the link, and that's how I will then share my website with my teacher or whomever I need it. So in here, when you hit to uh, publish, once again, you're gonna pick a category. You can turn on who the author is. And what I love about Adobe Express, look at this, ladies and gentlemen, if you're using photos, it automatically creates a photo credit at the very end of your website. So that way, um, you know, all, all, all systems are met. So I'm gonna let that ride. And as you can see here, we now have a link to share my website that includes my graphics, that includes my videos or any other work that I'm doing um, in class, right? And if you're looking at this here, if you do use uh, Google Classroom, that's automatically turned on if you use Microsoft, then of course you can either do the link and insert it that way through your uh, favorite learning management system. Woo, I know that was a lot of uh, information, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to uh, uh, make sure that this is here because we do want your feedback. And I know this hour went by quick. I wish I was there live with you and hopefully in the near future, I will be, but I'm gonna stop the share right now uh, because I wanna see your, your other questions because I, I know we only have like two minutes left.
Okay. Yes, and I do apply. Like I said, you know, uh, I apologize for for going a, a little fast, but uh, once again, this was an exploration. So hopefully, you got enough uh, a lot of goodies uh, to to continue with you. Um, apologize for that, but um, <laughs> here at school, that's going on. So don't worry about that. Uh, so the login information, like I said, please make sure you're logging in. Thank you, Leonard, here uh, to log into your Clever. You go to clever.sfusd.edu. Be sure to log in with your Google. Once again, so the question is, how do kids, you know, address uh, or how can they get to Adobe Express? Um, once again, it's going through Clever. Um, and Leonard, Leonard did a really awesome job. I'm going to copy, I'm going to paste it down here on the chat again in case you need that information. All right, folks, I guess this is my time. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you learned a few cool things. Um, if you want more information or if you're like Martin, I, I, I want to know a little bit more about you um, or, or you want to connect with me, you can find me on all the socials at The Tech Profe. Or uh, you can go to my website, thetechprofe.com if you want to uh, email me. So with that, thank you. Thank you all so much for being with us today. I hope you have an awesome day um, of learning and um, see you all on the web. Thank you so much. Have a great one. Looks like, looks like uh, we're all done here. Um, do you have anything else uh, we need to do? Or we're all set. All right, Leonard. Thank you so much for all your help today. Great all right. Well, thank you. Have a good day. Bye.